Uh, yes, and we, we specifically send out a warning saying not to use too many of them, especially for uh, people who are not familiar with, with the product. Now, I understand ephedrine is a, is a product that's included in some chemical preparations. Some things are sold over the counter as well. Would you say that somebody who took the herbal version of that, Mr. Stern, the ephedra version of that, would feel better than somebody who would take the chemical, the, the commercial pharmaceutical product? I don't, I don't think the particular, the particular formulation or, pro, or product is going to have an effect on, on the way the, the herb affects people. So it's just a matter of the way it's uh, marketed in, in, in those terms. So the same, same uh, herbs are available in many different forms. So if they're marketed that way in, in a pharmaceutical form, would you then want the FDA to step in and regulate as it would with a pharmaceutical product? We think the FDA should step in and regulate where a product is shown to be dangerous. And it takes a lot more than one or two isolated incidents when millions of people are using a product to show that it's dangerous. Any product is dangerous if it's abused or if it's overused. Uh, and, it, and, so, and many products have unusual effects in particular people. That doesn't mean that the public at large should be deprived of the ability to, to use these products. Mr. Blumenthal, I want to bring you back in here then. If, uh, if Mr. Stern says, all right, we do want some regulation when it comes to things that have been proven to be dangerous, do you think that there needs to be some sort of monitoring regulation by some sort of federal agency, whether it's the FDA or I don't know who else it would be, do you think that, that it merits that kind of monitoring because it is sold in this way? I think it uh, regulate, it needs regulation. The uh, herb industry two years ago, recognizing the potential health risks of the herb Ma Wong, uh, unilaterally and voluntarily put out warning labels and dosage limitations on all herbal products that are made by members of the Earth Trade Association for any herbal products containing Ma Wong. That was two years ago. Six months ago, the FDA convened its own expert advisory panel on the subject, and the advisory panel, even fully conscious of the adverse effect reports to the FDA, recommended a similar policy that the industry's been following, the responsible industry, that is, uh, for warning labels and dosage limitations. The FDA's own expert panel did not vote or recommend to ban the herb Ma Wong. Now, it's been six months, the FDA has not taken any action against some of these products that it's so concerned about, and why is that? Uh, it's blaming the Congress, unfortunately, because it says that the Dietary Supplement Act it hampers or hamstrings its ability to do so. But the Dietary Supplement Act gives FDA even more authority to take any products off the market that it considers to be unsafe or that poses a public health problem. Dr. McDowell, do you agree? I mean, there has been some study. There is, after all, thousands of years of use of this particular Correct. material. No, nobody's saying that Ma Wong or, mm -hmm. or and herbal remedies ought to be taken off the market. What we're saying is that there ought to be more responsible, more, more regulation of responsible marketing so that your typical 8 or 10 or 12 year old can't go in to any store, buy these fabulously packaged um, uh, pills that are all brightly colored and take 8, 10, 12 of them. Um, Without regulation, Dr. McDowell, can you be sure of the particular mixture, the percentages, the purity of, no, of these you can't. substances? You can't, and that's, that's another uh, huge problem, um, that the, the, it's not highly regulated in terms of what these mixtures are, what's in fact in them, uh, the purity, et cetera. All right. Well, let's uh, say goodbye here to Keith Stern from the Eric's Magic Garden Herbals in California. We thank you for joining us on the phone line, Mr. Stern. Thank you very much. All right, we want to consider further, though, the use of other herbal remedies. Is there a question in your mind about herbal remedies being used, Dr. McDowell, uh, for different purposes, not necessarily for a high, but for uh, indigestion, these kind of things? There is some tradition. There's a lot of history in those areas. Would you see that as being worthy of less regulation? Um, there certainly is a long history of herbal remedies, as I said before. Uh, curing all sorts of things, and, and in general, a responsible physician wouldn't have any objection to those. The problem is there isn't a lot of regulation, and historically we've gotten into trouble before with uh, herbal remedies uh, sort of supposed to take care of everything. Coca-Cola, uh, cocaine was, was available in the turn of the century, both in the United States and in Europe, and touted as a cure-all from everything from piles to, to uh, existential angst, and that's... <laughs> And it, um, 
Mr. We Blumenthal, got into trouble there. Mr. Blumenthal, let me ask you this. You know, we hear the term natural bandied about quite a bit. Uh, herbal, natural. These are things that can be fairly seductive that might make us think that these are drugs or these are materials that can be used just as you would use oregano on your pizza, I guess. Uh, do, you, do you see that, that we're misunderstanding natural? Well, I think natural doesn't necessarily mean it's safe, but let's keep something clear here. Cocaine, the example that Dr. McDowell used, is not an herbal remedy. Cocaine is an extract, highly purified and concentrated, from a coca leaf, which is quite safely used by Andean Indians. Uh, herbs have been used for thousands of years, yes, it's true, but unlike your report says, many herbs have been subject to scientific scrutiny by Western clinicians, scientists in other countries where clinical studies are done. The German government has evaluated over 300 herbs that are used in pharmacies and recommended by physicians, recommending over 200 and approving 200 herbs as legitimate, safe, effective, non-prescription medicines. Uh, five years ago, the herb industry recommended that the FDA set up an advisory panel of outside independent experts to evaluate the safety and the health benefits of herbs sold in the United States. On two occasions, the FDA has rejected that outside advisory panel review system. We need a system that evaluates herbs properly for their safe and effective use in this so, country. So, Mr. Blumenthal, if you had the choice, if you were going to take, for example, a laxative product uh, that would be an over-the-counter, chemically prepared uh, product, or an herbal product, which would you choose? Uh, I could use both because there's three uh, popular herbs that are uh, approved by the FDA as safe and effective over-the-counter laxative, but I would have always prefer the natural uh, herbal laxative as long as I know it's safe and I would follow package directions and use it responsibly. The problem is many people don't always follow directions. The, case of, the unfortunate case of Peter Schlendorf is he took eight tablets. The package clearly says take two to four, not to exceed dosage within a 24-hour period. The problem is on a social cultural level, are we going to follow ingredient labeling package instructions? Are we going to misuse and abuse products? Or are we going to follow instructions? And Dr. McDowell, do you think that the issue here is just a greater sense of concern and responsibility, individual responsibility, and, and reading the product? Uh, and, and the responsibility of the manufacturer and the distributor to, um, to responsibly offer warnings when, when they're appropriate and not to make uh, either subtle or unsubtle misleading um, promises about the effects of the, of the products. Gentlemen, we thank you both for joining us this morning. Uh, Dr. David McDowell in New York and Mark Blumenthal in Forcing Atlanta today. My Thanks. pleasure. Appreciate it. Thank you. It's time for us to take a break. When we return...